Hello and welcome all, Sam and uh, Nikki. For starters, uh, we are here at uh, the pre-final press conference, DP World ILT20 Season 2, and you've had an action-packed season which is now heading towards an exhilarating finale between these two top teams who have done phenomenally well to uh, confirm their spots for the big final tomorrow here at the Dubai International Stadium. 33 matches were played, and before that, we, uh, the entire action was all about uh, gaining that top two slots and ensuring that uh, the final slots are confirmed. Both these teams uh, have made it to the DP World ILE 20 final for the first time. Remember last year we had the Gulf Giants and Desert Vipers. This time around Sam Billings uh, captaining, captaining Dubai Capitals and Nicholas Puran captaining MI Emirates have made it through. Uh, we are all ready for the pre-final press conference. I'll now request uh, both of you for some opening words. Uh, we'll start with you, Sam. Phenomenal season. We had you here uh, uh, when we had the opening press conference, and of course you were confident of doing well. DC didn't really have uh, the best of the seasons last time around, but ever since you took the captaincy, it's been a different story. Yeah, it's um, the nature of T20 cricket. There's highs and lows, of course. It's a pretty volatile um, format of the game, but it's amazing when you have a team just focusing on really simple um, processes and uh, have, and playing as a team as well. Um, we've started, you know, just finding our rhythm and our momentum with it. And uh, like I said, we've got some really good results and uh, confidence is high. But uh, taking nothing for granted, we've kind of been playing knockout cricket for the last four or five games because we had to win every single game. But uh, it, it puts us in good stead for these final stages. Of course, you're being humble also. Super, uh, it's been uh, a different story once you took over the mantle of the captaincy. So any different approach that you had uh, to the earlier games, you did say that perhaps the knockout mentality helped? Maybe a little bit. Uh, look, I, I have huge respect for David Warner. He is one of probably, arguably one of the greatest cricketers ever to play the game in terms of all formats. So uh, David's strength and also um, I've learned a huge amount on and off the field from him. So um, hugely thankful and, and what he did for the whole group was amazing. Um, it's amazing. Captaincy is one of those things that uh, when it goes wrong, it's your fault. And when it goes right, it's not, it's not you. But um, yeah, I, it's a team effort. Every single team, you can't just, as a captain, you're only as good as the teammates behind you and, and who are following you. So uh, a huge credit goes to every single individual who's been around. And everyone stayed upbeat as well. I think that's the biggest thing. Regardless of uh, performances and results, everyone stayed level. We've stayed upbeat, stuck together. And that's a huge part of it as well. You mentioned David. Are we in for a surprise tomorrow? I hope so. <laughs> no, uh, whether w win with or without, uh, we're playing some good cricket. So uh, we've got quality up and down our lineup, as do these guys. So it, it's going to be a great game. Two brilliant sides, um, different journeys to the final. But uh, I think that's what makes it most exciting. Thank you, Sam. All the very best. Nikki, coming to you. If I look uh, at the top uh, bowling performances, you're all over your team. Like you've got uh, Fazal Haq Faruqi at the top. Waka Salam Khail, uh, Trent Bolt. So bowling, it seems, has had an important uh, role to play. You've been able to get teams out. You've been able to defend low totals at times and also really do well with, uh, while bowling first. So maybe you think bowling has been one of the key strengths of MIE this season? Yeah, definitely. Um, we spoke at the, at the beginning of the tournament and we said, you know, batsmen win new games, but bowlers win new tournaments. And it's really nice to see that you know, in these conditions here, yeah, the bowlers are actually stepping up and you know, putting those types of performances in. Um, not only you know, Fazal Haq, Trent, Waka, but Akil has been really brilliant as well. And then Bravo just doing what he does you know, in big games and in tight situations. So that's something, that's something we definitely you know, cherish a lot, right? We, we definitely cherish that and we're really happy that our bowlers will stand up for us. And of course, you are in the reckoning also for the green belt. I think uh, very much there in the run uh, if you have a impact in the final. So the batting has also been really good. Yourself, uh, Kusil Pereira and uh, Mohamed Wasim at the top. Yeah, those guys have been fantastic. Lucky to have them in our team. But you know, it's all about T20 cricket and adjusting to the conditions, adjusting, adjusting to you know, the opposition. I think in T20 cricket, it's a big challenge where you play one opposition today, then two days or the day after you're playing a total different bowling attack, a different opposition. So it's quite challenging. It's a difficult game as well. Pollard and David, of course, returning, adding so much firepower to the lower half of the batting order as well. Yeah, not only firepower, but you know, experience. I think you can't buy experience and that's something that you know, we're really happy to have in that dressing room. You know, 
again, not firepower, not only experience, but leadership qualities. I think we have a lot of young youngsters in our team, and you know we have the opportunity to learn from you know Bravo, Paula. These guys have won the most amount of T20 titles, play the most amount of games, have the most amount of wickets in T20 cricket, and that's the opportunity this game brings for us. Awesome. Uh, Sam, coming to you, didn't ask you about this, but your bowling also has been incredibly good uh, with Stone and Kugeline making an impact. Zahir Shah also coming in. So you think, again, uh, since these reinforcements have come, the bowling has worked incredibly top class. Yeah, it's, um, it's been an interesting tournament. Obviously, a lot of different trends as well. Um, as, as you alluded to about MI, I mean, yeah, they've been brilliant with both bat and ball, and, and Nicky's spot on. Uh, bowlers win your tournaments, and without that, without taking wickets continuously, any team has the batting firepower to really get away from you. Uh, I don't think a single team's got 200 in the tournament, so it, it kind of tells the story that batsmen have to adapt, but the bowlers have been really on top. Um, you know, wrist spin is always something that's like gold dust in 2020 cricket, and, and Zahir coming in and having a brilliant impact, turning the ball sharply both ways. Um, and, and I think the emergence of someone like Haider Ali as well, for me, that's the most positive thing. We saw Mohamed Wazim obviously opening the batting, but Haider, um, one of the young kind of UAE stars, that's what's most exciting about a tournament like this for me is, is seeing the emergence of these new players and, and seeing the development even from last year. I think you see the pool of talent in the UAE really growing year on year. And um, look, that's, that's, that's a huge part as to why this tournament's so important. So um, yeah, I think that's a the most successful teams. If you look at us two in the final, the UAE players have played a huge part and, and that goes a long way. A uh, quick word about your UAE performance also. Rohit has been phenomenally good as well, taking some incredible wickets with some top quality performances. And Wasim once again, very much at the forefront also. Yeah, just to start on Wasim, um, he's been brilliant, not only this year, but last year. I think he got the Emerging Award last year. He's been, he's been really good in international cricket as well. Um, Sam obviously is right there. I think it's really important to have this tournament as well for these players. Um, you know, he's been fantastic for us. Really happy that he's getting the opportunity to do what he do, do what he does best. I think um, with the amount of T20 crickets happening in the world now, it's a really good opportunity for him to you know, obviously showcase his talent all over the world as well. And when it comes to Rohit, um, you know, we're just really happy for him. You know, Bravo is talking about. He just loves this kid. He loves the energy he brings. Yes, we have a lot of bowlers in our team who are doing really well. And, you know, Rohit finds himself in a tough situation where, you know, if Bolte doesn't start well, we need to give him some tough overs. And, you know, he's just happy to take the ball and run in with energy. And that attitude makes a lot, a big difference. Um, he gets two wickets and over. He gets one, in a wick, one over in a wicket. He changes the game. And, you know, we're just happy for him that he can get this opportunity to, you know, express himself, have fun, learn at the same time. And you know, it's just brilliant. It's just brilliant to have him and see how he goes about this game. Thank you, Nikki and Sam. Uh, I'll now open the floor uh, for uh, journalist Razia. If we can begin with you, and then Nayib. Uh, with UAE wickets at the beginning of any tournament, there al there's always a lot of talk about spin. And uh, in this tournament, I'd say the first 10 days, there was a lot of talk about dew factor. Then perhaps the conditions were wetter than you might have expected. So how much of a role do you both think spin played in this tournament? We went down to matches that went down to the last ball. Did pace bowling play more of a role than you had perhaps expected at the beginning? We expected that you know, early up in the tournament, the pace will have on back. Obviously, the wickets are fresh. There's some grass on the wickets. The ball is going to seem around a bit. I think coming from the T10 tournament, um, we noticed that there's a lot of movement on a wicket. And you know, that's something where you know, all the teams would have been aware of. And I guess early up in the tournament, the seamers would have had an impact. But as the tournament goes along as anywhere else, it, the wicket slows down. You know, spinners always have an impact, especially when you have you know, good quality spinners. You know, as, as Sam said, wrist spin is obviously really important in world cricket. And, and there's no surprise that these, guys, these are the guys who have a big impact in the tournament. Sam, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, just to add on that, I think each wicket, and this is why it's a really interesting tournament as well, because three different venues, which all op, uh, offer kind of different challenges, both for batters and bowlers. So you have to adapt really quickly. We, we played terribly at Sharjah the first two games, and then last night managed to adapt. adapt. Um, but the characteristics of that wicket are very different to Abu Dhabi. 
and then obviously here as well. So um, I think each venue definitely does, like this place, dewed up a lot more. Uh, Abu Dhabi, there was no dew at all, and Sharjah uh, was a little bit. Um, so again, a very, very different challenge for each three of the venues. Sam, uh, the, your team touched the rock bottom and then also Warner going back and everything was against you. What did you tell your boys to lift their team and reach here? Yeah, um, I think sometimes when, when, when a big player like that leaves, um, he, he's, as I, as I said earlier, he's one of the best players that I've seen in the last 20 years, no doubt about it. And um, what he offered to the group was so much learning around the group. But then when such a big player leaves, they're big boots to fill and every other player has to turn around and go, we've got to take this on now. We've got to really take the mantle and take the responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's what, it, what everyone did. Uh, realized it has to be a real team effort um, and just stepped up. Uh, that was phenomenal. And we just kept it really simple. We didn't look too far ahead. It was always one step at a time, one game at a time. Uh, very clear process about how we go, uh, go about things. And, and we picked a consistent team. I think, again, I think we were talking about it earlier, um, Nicky and I out there, is the best teams in world cricket. Pick a consistent team. You probably change maybe one or two players the whole tournament. But generally, you just go, right, this is our best team, and you back those guys. We're not robots. You're not going to perform every game. But if you have that consistency, it instills confidence in everyone and also the guys coming in that they're not just going to get sacked after one game here or there. So uh, that's something that's really important for me, certainly from a captaincy point of view. Pick your best team, back them in, and, and the results will come. Uh, hi, Nicholas. Uh, I have two questions for you. First is a, a new captain, new coach uh, from almost from the bottom of the table, now you are at the top. What's the difference that uh, you find, they are, what was the difference in approach that helped you to win this year? What was the change? Um, we haven't win this year, we just qualified for the final so far. Yeah, but still you kept a winning run and qualified quite early. Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, we didn't get after the best start, we lost the first game of the tournament. And for us it was all about understanding the conditions. Um, three different venues, three different, three, three different ways. We haven't, I think we just won, we have, in the two years, we just won one game in Dubai. And um, obviously playing that last game here, that was a big challenge for us because we knew if we wanted to qualify for the finals, we had to cross that line and that was a challenge for us. Um, but it's all about understanding the conditions. We have been fantastic in Abu Dhabi. We have had a 100% 100, 100 record in Sharjah. And it's just about understanding the conditions, you know, having conversations, coming up with different tactics, changing personnel as, personnel as well. But for us, as a group, we want to win. And in order for us to win, we need to step up as individuals, as players. Um, and in, and as, as you can see from a player's perspective, a lot of our players have been consistent. It has been a long tournament as well. Um, you know, form can change as well. Bowlers can stop taking wickets, batsmen can have a couple of bad games as well. But the fact of the matter remains where we all wanted to do well. We wanted to do well for ourselves, for our team, and for the franchise. And I think that makes a lot of difference when you know, everyone's agendas is the same. Yes, personnel have changed in the last couple of games as well. We know with the hectic international schedule, there's a lot of change and chopping. But again, the message is the same. It's all about giving a good account of yourself, giving 110% on the cricket field, and the results will take care of itself. Yeah, that was my next question. Uh, how difficult is for a modern-day player, T20 player? You traveled almost to the end of the world, to Australia, and came back within a week after playing three games. How much it's affecting your fitness, and uh, how, how do you prepare mentally uh, in different time zones? Uh, it's definitely a challenge, but it's also our job, and we need to adjust. Uh, simple as that. Hi, Nicholas. Uh, I have a question. Both uh, Robin Singh and Ajay Jadeja is in your team, and uh, they are the most influential figure in the cricket. So as a captain, uh, what qualities is bringing to you, and also how they are inspiring the teammates? So uh, to be, uh, is there anything that uh, teammates to perform at their best? I mean, these are guys who are 
highly respected. Um, they've been wonderful players in their career. They have a lot of respect all over the world. And just to have both of them in the dressing room, you know, as a youngster, it's just, again, I keep emphasizing on the opportunity to learn. These guys, you know, they bat spin so well. They have had really good international careers. And I think it's really important for these guys, especially in the Nets, to, you know, teach us different tactics, how to go about bat and spin in a different way. We all have, we all from different backgrounds. We come from different places. We play cricket differently. And just to get that experience and that knowledge of guys who've been here and done it, it's really important. And I think from, obviously, a leadership standpoint, they've been wonderful so far. Um, they go about the cricket differently. But the beauty of this league is understanding how you speak to other players from different regions. And they've been wonderful in that, in that <coughs> area. And you know, so far, it's been wonderful. Happy to have them. Happy to, happy to have learned from them as well. Yeah, okay. Um, all the franchises have got pretty large squads. Um, Sam, you've talked about picking a consistent team. Um, it's a question for both of you, actually. Um, how do you, some players have not played very much, hardly at all. Um, how do you keep them on side? Um, I know you're winning, so that helps. But um, generally, how do you go about keeping those guys um, with you and, um, and ready to perform if they're called upon? Yeah, it's a challenge. Look, I've, I've, I went through probably eight years of doing 12th man all around the world, so um, I, know, I know how difficult it is, and it's, it is frustrating. We want to be playing. Of course we do. So um, it's, I think clear communication is the, is the biggest thing. So being really clear, honest with people as well, because people see through uh, misinformation. So just saying, look, if this guy gets injured, your, your role will be in the top three, and that's the slot you'll step into. And, and other guys being kind of honest, but also going, right, well, how can you shape this differently of what can you still get out of this trip for yourself? So instead of, you, you might not be playing, but actually you can still improve. Can you improve in the nets or the conversations, set up different conversations around um, how they can change their thinking so people can still get something out of the trip? Um, and like you said, I think off the field, making them feel a part of the team, um, yeah, it's up to the individual whether they want to do it at the end of the day as well. Let's be honest, we, we've got a great opportunity to be traveling the world playing this game, so um, it could be a lot worse. So it's, it's up to people to make the most out of the whole opportunity, but um, I think we've done pretty well with that. It, it's been a really good group, group of players that have all kind of bound together, um, which, which is great. One question to, to both of you is, uh, how has been the turnout? How surprised were you? Good turnout and also the facilities when here when you play with other two leagues. So how do you feel, both of you? Yeah, Dubai, there's nothing Dubai doesn't do well. <laughs> I mean, it, pretty much everything is here. Um, we're very lucky. I think well, I can speak on the behalf of both of us, the hotels, the support that we get around the games, the training facilities that we've had at the ICC Academy. I think I've been there probably every year for the last 10 years or something. So. It's an amazing facility that we get looked after brilliantly, but um, yeah, we've, we've had a great time uh, on and off the field, but it's uh, hopefully um, we've done all the preparation we can and um, we're, we're just very thankful for the opportunity. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, I mean, I can't follow that up, right? <laughs> it's been wonderful. Um, UE brings everything for us and we're really happy that you know, cricket is growing here in the UE. Hopefully it continues and you know, we, could, we can be a part of that. We'll take last two, three quick questions. Yeah. Okay. You want to go first? Sorry, uh, just quickly on that as well. Obviously, I played in the final last year for Desert Vipers. About to bring that up. So, yeah, sorry. But the, um, the crowd last year for the final was phenomenal. It was packed absolutely everywhere. So hopefully we get a similar um, turnout together tomorrow. Um, look, obviously separate franchises, but obviously Mumbai versus Delhi is a big rivalry. So hopefully, hopefully tomorrow will be, um, it'll be watched by a lot of people online, but it's, you know, we've both played a lot of IPLs and we always know that that rivalry, there's huge respect, but it's a big rivalry. So hopefully uh, that'll be forefront tomorrow. 
Uh, Sam, the way Capitals, of course, had to play extra matches to get into the final. Uh, so tell us a little about the team atmosphere. What was it that was spoken about after securing the place in the final in the stupendous way that the way Capitals uh, did? We observed the long team huddle as well uh, yesterday. So what was uh, the talk before stepping into the final? Get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, um, it's good, isn't it? When you're playing well, you want the games to come, keep coming. When you're playing badly, you want a big break in between games. So, um, no, we're you know we're just kind of riding that wave. It's one more game, like I said, against a top team. Uh, we'll rest up today, and you know we've all the work's been done. Uh, it's about going out there, enjoying the occasion, and really um, just going out there and, and playing your best cricket. Simple as that. Hi, Nicholas. Um, pitches here have been slightly on the slower side. Do you find it as a good rehearsal for the T20 World Cup, considering the nature of pitches we might see back at your home? Yeah, I think this is perfect conditions. I, I believe if I know anything about the Caribbean conditions, it's going to be similar. So, you know, it's a good opportunity again for the players who are playing in this tournament and going to take part in that T20 World Cup. I think it's going to be similar. Thank you. Well, Sam, uh, what do you have to say about Sikandar Raza's role? He's MVP of the tournament, highest run scorer for your team, and one of the highest wicket takers as well. How crucial his role is in the team? I think you've summed it up pretty well there. MVP um, for good reason. I think every game, even if he's missed out with the bat, he's one of our best fielders. He offers everything on the field, and, and with the ball, he's really shown up. Um, he's got all the different variations, and um, I think Again, the great thing about T20 cricket is he's getting better and better with age. Um, again, another, we've had some good conversations already today out, out the back, but uh, I, I think it's, you can't be putting an age kind of bracket and, and writing people off. Um, the last two years, I think, has been the best form of his career. So uh, long may it continue. And he's, he's someone that I played, obviously, uh, PSL with him last year, and he was brilliant in those conditions as well. So he's done it all around the world um, and a great player to have on any side. Any more questions? That's it, you had okay, we'll go to you for one final time. This is for both of you. From the outside, sometimes it feels like a franchise cricket is not as challenging as a bilateral series, but obviously a lot of matches here have gone down to the last over and the last ball. Um, so players are under pressure. What role does franchise cricket play in enhancing your international careers? How, how much importance do you give it? Oh, a huge amount. As, uh, as the previous question said, these wickets pr provide perfect uh, preparation for the T20 World Cup coming up. Um, and as a player, I think that's where you can judge yourself, but also get judged by others, is how well you can adapt to different conditions, not just your own conditions at home. If you can play all around the world, win all around the world, um, then I think that's the true mark of uh, any player. So uh, you need different skill sets, you need different mindset. Um, but yeah, that's a that's huge, huge amount for, certainly for me as well, like being on the fringes of that England side is a very tough team to get into. It's the only way I'm going to force my way into, back into international cricket is by performing consistently in conditions like this or around the world. So um, there's a lot to play for for every single individual, but also if international cricket isn't uh, an option for players, we want to win. We want to win trophies. So um, this gives the perfect opportunity to, to try and get your hands on trophies. And um, look, James Vince is a great example of that, I think. You see him in the last five, six years. Uh, hasn't played a much international cricket, but has been phenomenal around the world and won a lot of trophies. So um, it offers another opportunity that if you're not in the international setup to really play top level cricket against the world's best players. Yeah, Sam, Sam, you're spot on. But for me, I think a lot of people underestimate franchise cricket. I think, you know, it's just franchise cricket. For me, I've been a son of franchise cricket. I've been playing since the age of, what, 17. And, you know, cricket, yes, cricket is a sport, but it's also a business. You know, the team owners want to win. You know, we as players, especially overseas players, you know, sometimes there's four, sometimes there's five involved in the team, in the 11. And yes, you do feel the pressure to perform. And T20 is not one where you have 50 balls to bat or 60 balls or 20 balls. Sometimes you have 5, 10, 15, and you have to have an impact, especially with five guys out and 
you know, playing on different conditions against really good bowlers. Um, for me, what that does, it, it builds mentality. It helps you for international cricket. It definitely helped me because at one point in my career, I was on a bench. And the bench is not nice because when you're on a bench, you're staying at a hotel sometimes. You're watching your team play on TV. And for me, I felt like I wanted to be a part of that 11. I wanted to feel that winning spirit. And that encouraged me and forced me to work harder on my skill. It forced me to understand what I had to do to stay on the park, what I had to do to perform so I can you know, continue being on a team and continue giving my, giving my team a chance to win as well. And I think it's extremely difficult because you need to understand how to deal with different cultures, de de deal with different people, understand what they're saying because, you know, there's a language barrier as well. But that's, that's the journey and it's a really great opportunity for us as players to grow, grow as cricketers and grow as individuals and human beings. And it definitely helps you, you know, prepare yourself for international cricket. Um, and I'm so happy that in the last 10, 15 years, T20 cricket has grown so much. And, you know, it's going to continue to grow and it's going to continue to give a lot of players opportunities to obviously, you know, have a, a better profession and better financial life as well. And it's only going to grow from my individual perspective and as a cricketer perspective. So I'm really happy that Franchise Cricket is here and really happy that, really happy with everything that it comes with. Thank you very much for all your questions and the interaction. Just uh, one each for you two. Uh, I'll come to you first, Nikki. You're about... Uh, 59 runs away from equaling James Wins and giving him a real shot uh, for the belt. Of course, if you score more, then you potentially take over the belt. You and uh, Pereira are both locked at 297. We haven't had 100 yet in the tournament. Is tomorrow the time for you to unfurl one? I'll come to you. I'll give you something similar. Don't worry. <laughs> I'd love to say yes, but uh, I know it doesn't work like that. If I know what's going to happen tomorrow, then today would be a really good day for us and for me. But um, yeah. Tomorrow just gives us another opportunity. And these belts, a quick word on this. Uh, individual awards, they're all there on the left uh, of, uh, of you. Uh, again, something that's kind of unique to the DP World ILG 20. Enjoy holding them and posing with them? Yeah, for sure. Um, as a fan of WWE, um, <laughs> it would be nice. It's unique. We were just talking about it. It brings something differently. It's nice to have one of that in your trophy case. So, But again, as much as that's just looking as a belt, that's really difficult to get, right? Yeah. <laughs> 77 runs for you, Sam. So again, if you score 100, you'll probably clear the rest. Well, like last night, hopefully I don't have to bat. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I think individual awards are great, but, you know, it means nothing if, if your team's not in the final and have a chance for this one. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of good players in, in this competition. Um, I don't care if I don't get any runs tomorrow as long as we win. So, um, we know it's going to be a really tough, tough um, game tomorrow. They've got some quality players. This man sat next to me. Um, like I, in answer to your question, I hope he doesn't get 100. <laughs> I enjoy watching him bat, but not tomorrow. But it's, um, no, uh, we're all really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, like I said, the main prize is the one in the middle of us. Brilliant. Very much a home game. You've already spoken about the crowd. So again, a final message maybe for your fans, for the Dubai Capitals fan, of course, you would want them to come in their numbers tomorrow. Yeah, of course. Uh, Dubai Capitals fans, yeah, have been phenomenal all year um, in all three venues as well. And, and like I said, it doesn't get much bigger than Delhi versus Mumbai. So um, I think it's, it's going to be a great, great, uh, great tournament finale and uh, against two top teams. And Nikki, yes, same for you. Of course, you've had great support throughout also. Any final message for your fans? Uh, because, of course, a huge franchise presence around the world. Tomorrow is the big day. Maybe you'll want them to come out and support you all. Yeah, I know for a fact they're going to come out. Um, hopefully, they come out in the blue as well, so they can you know, intimidate the Dubai Capitals team. But, um, yeah, expecting a wonderful crowd. You know, the MI fans have been brilliant for the last decade, so you know, we expect nothing. We've, just to add to that, we've been to the finals last year in America, and... You know, the stadium was wonderful and blue. So <laughs> we're looking forward to that tomorrow as well. <laughs> so yes, of course. And also to mention, since you've been mentioning the other cities, this is Dubai versus Abu Dhabi, and it's as big as it gets in this part of the world. So of course, Absolutely. yeah. <laughs>
Guys, thank you very much. Uh, Sam and Nikki, all the very best for the final tomorrow. We really hope it's uh, a great contest, and you both have been absolute champions. have had a great run throughout the tournament, and we wish you the very best uh, for the grand final tomorrow. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you all, and, of course, everyone who's been watching us uh, on our Facebook Live. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. See you all at the final tomorrow.